They uh, said, you know, if you come to the dinner, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll find some award for you. He said, really? <laughs> I thought he was going to get on a plane, but anyway. Uh, so for the purposes of uh, presenting the Distinguished Leadership Award, I'm presenting another one of the honorables, the Honorable Clarence Bud Albright, who used to be known as just Bud Albright, but we were on a UK mission with Jeremy Harrell, our vice chairman, and he went by Clarence House, where Prince Charles lives in the UK, and he says, you can call me Clarence from now on. <laughs> I said, do we have to call you your excellency? I don't know, he said no, but anyway, for the purpose of the introduction of the pre presentation, Bud Albright. No, don't, don't, don't applaud for me. I love these introductions of the introducer. Well, welcome. This is the 15th annual uh, meeting of this type of our, to present the Distinguished uh, Leadership Award. And uh, this, this is also known as, as the, uh, as the uh, Academy Awards of the nuclear industry. So. <laughs> My job, in part, will be to uh, tell some uh, bad jokes, uh, insult half of America, and uh, you know have someone refuse to take an award. Uh, Senator, I hope it's not you. <laughs> With this culmination, it's a culmination of a couple of days of uh, meetings that we've had here on uh, capital formation and capital issues and other issues that face the nuclear industry. It's been really a, a, a terrific meeting. I give David the credit. He pulled all the people together. David, we thank you. Uh, we had, uh, we really did have some outstanding people. We had some differences of opinion, which is good. Uh, we had some spirited debate, which is good. But all in all, I think this was a terrific uh, two days. I'm not the only one who thinks that. Uh, most of you know the name Robert McFarland, better known as Bud McFarland, uh, who was President Reagan's National Security Advisor. And I want to read you what he said. Senator, I'm not going to steal your speech time, but I do have a couple of things here. He thanked us for being included and said, this was the most distinguished and experienced group of professionals assembled, assembled in any conference on nuclear I've ever seen. Now, to me, coming from the former head of the National Security Council, that is quite an honor. And I think if you look around this room, you will see the same quality of people and, as our presenters and, uh, and indeed some of our presenters still here. Um, tonight's award goes to uh, a man of many titles, state senator, president of the Senate, governor, lieutenant governor, senator, Mr. Chairman, goes on and on. But uh, I think the best title you have, Senator, is, is being husband to your lovely wife, Vicki. Uh, Forty years. Forty years. That's just terrific. I, uh, I've been married uh, 28 years and uh, only to seven women. So it's, uh, <laughs> they were happy years. They were happy years. The, I, uh, I, did once, I did once introduce my wife as my current wife. <laughs> I came home two days later and she had turned the power off and there was a sign on the door that said, the current has gone. <laughs> so, uh, Senator, we, you have been a, a wonderful supporter and champion uh, for so many nuclear issues and so many important issues beyond nuclear and energy in uh, the U.S. As you know, he's foreign, foreign affairs chairman and uh, not many more important committees than that. But he has uh, either been a sponsor or co-sponsor of uh, almost every piece of important legislation that's gone through the, uh, the Senate, and many of which have been signed by the President and, and are now law. Just, I think, yesterday, maybe today, yesterday, the uh, 
Nuclear Energy Leadership Act came out of committee. And we hope, we hope and uh, that it gets to the president and the president, I'm certain, will sign it if it does. But we thank you for, for your for your leadership, and we thank you for your leadership with an award that we have here. So please come up. Uh, the United States Nuke 2019 Distinguished for the Honorable James Risch, United States Senate. We thank you, sir. It would be much bigger and made of gold, but the ethical rules won't allow it. Uh. <laughs> and you're on that committee, I believe. Thank you. Thank you. Gosh, thanks so much. I'm, uh, but those were very kind remarks. And uh, if uh, Vicky keep him in mind for our, my funeral, would you? <laughs> <clears throat> anyway, uh, say hello again to the former first lady of the great state of Idaho, my first lady for 51 years, Vicky. <laughs> Now, Vicki and I have been married 51 years, but she claims that it's actually been more than that because she and I have run 34 campaigns together, and she says that she counts campaign years in dog years, which actually takes us a lot higher than 51 years. So, anyway, Vicki, thank you. Um, and thanks to the staff that's here. Uh, gosh, I couldn't, uh, couldn't possibly do the things that, uh, that I do without the great staff help that I have and that I've had over the years. Uh, it, it's been very good. There's uh, a number of them been, John and I were partners for, law well, partners for 35 years. Um, two things you should know about us, John and I were partners for 35 years, and uh, one more fellow that was a partner uh, of ours for 35 years, and we kind of went, to, everybody retired. When I became governor, I think people started to retire, but uh, that was uh, five, six years ago. Today. The three of us are still married to the same people we were married to the day we started practicing law. But, but just as importantly, and this would, you will never find three other lawyers like this in America. We also were full partners for uh, 35 years, and we never had a partnership agreement in writing. All we had was a handshake. So try to find three, par try to find three lawyers like that in America. I've, uh, we have the lowest uh, turnover of anybody on Cap Capitol Hill for staff. Now, the President and I are fairly good friends. He has a little different way of doing business than I do. But name it, where's Ryan White? Is Ryan here or did Ryan go home? Ryan go home? Ryan was here earlier at, at the cocktail party. Ryan's a deputy chief of staff. Ryan worked for me when I was uh, lieutenant governor, when I was governor, and then uh, came to Washington, D.C. with me. So. We've had, the staff uh, has been, and the staff near, very seldom goes away. I mean, isn't that right? All right, she did my work on the uh, energy committee some time ago. You just, you just can't get away. Uh, in any event, the, the energy committee's been, uh, uh, been a great fit for me. I've been on the energy and natural resources committee since uh, uh, I got here to the Senate. In fact, I had, again, I didn't change, I've had, I've been on the exact same committees uh, from the day I got here, Foreign Relations uh, and Intelligence Committee, Energy and Natural Resources, and um, the Small Business Committee and uh, Ethics, UG. I'm on that committee too. And I've been on all of those committees uh, since I got here. Energy and Natural Resources was uh, a, a real nat uh, natural for me. Uh, Jim McClure, uh, my penultimate uh, predecessor, was uh, a chairman of that committee. and. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm number three on the committee. I've been in the right places at the right times. I've moved up through the committees. In any event, uh, nuclear is, uh, is close to my heart. Uh, it is part of Idaho. Uh, we are the gem state. Uh, Idaho National Laboratory is one of the gems of the gem state. And uh, we greatly appreciate that. Uh, it is the, with all due respect to everyone else in the room, it is the flagship nuclear energy uh, laboratory in America, and whenever Ernie Moniz was standing there, he'd always grab the microphone and say, yes, but not the only one. And then I would say, yes, but it should be. And uh, Ernie was, uh, uh, Ernie and I were really good friends uh, while well, he was uh, at the agency and uh, enjoyed uh, his company a lot, the interesting guy. Um, 
In any event, I want to thank uh, the Nuclear Industry Council for hosting uh, this week's conference. Uh, the conference provides an essential forum uh, for discussion and information relating to both the research and development of advanced nuclear uh, reactor technologies. As we seek to promote nuclear energy, engineering, and science, the discussions that took place this week will help further those efforts. I have every confidence. I'd also like to thank uh, tonight's sponsors. These kind of events, as we all know, aren't possible without sponsors. Thank you for that. Thank you for making this evening possible and for your uh, commitment and dedication uh, to the nuclear in industry. I'm proud to represent uh, the great state of Idaho, which is home to not just one of the Department uh, of Energy's labs, but the National Lab on Nuclear Energy, uh, the Idaho National Lab. Now, I was out, uh, my first trip to the lab, in fact, Vicki was with me, was in uh, uh, 1975, and it was a very different place uh, than it is today. And uh, the, the lab, of course, hosted uh, uh, the, the first uh, production of nuclear energy in the world, in the universe, uh, took place there. We still have the light bulbs that were lit by that. Uh, uh, we don't use them anymore, but we still have the light bulbs that, uh, that, that were lit. Um, and the lab was a, what was a very different place. We were still, uh, we were still had a lot of the effects of the, of the Cold War, and it had a, it had two missions. It had the research mission and it had the cleanup mission. And uh, the two of them were stepping on each other's toes to, uh, to some degree as we went along. And eventually, the state uh, uh, kept pressing the, the uh, DOE to do some cleanup out there and, and get the thing to where it, it uh, really needed to be. The DOE pushed back. We wound up in a lawsuit with the, with the DOE. Uh, cooler heads prevailed. We sat down and uh, negotiated and wound up with uh, what I think is, a, uh, is an outstanding agreement. And uh, the, uh, once we got the agreement in place, it really changed uh, the laboratory, and it, it took away one of the issues that, uh, that was clouding the, uh, the, the lab's uh, uh, efforts, and uh, it, it made life a lot better. I was honored to be the 31st governor of the great state of Idaho, and, and every governor uh, from the time that DOE started there has been a great supporter uh, of the lab uh, there in Idaho Falls. And, um, we, uh, now that we've got the, the uh, cleanup agreement in place, every governor likewise has been shoulder to shoulder working with the DOE on executing that agreement. Because as all agreements, there's a lot of things that don't get, uh, you don't think of as you're putting it into the contract, and you have to sit down and, and negotiate those things. And, and DOE has been, uh, been very good to work with in that regard, and uh, uh, the state of Idaho is very, very fortunate to have a lab. And through, through the years, our national labs have been at the forefront of scientific discoveries and breakthroughs. These breakthroughs and subsequent scientific tools have helped to advance America's energy's need, energy needs, achieve medical breakthroughs, push forward advanced manufacturing, and they protect our national security. And this work continues today. For those of you who don't know, the Idaho National Lab is, is becoming what I hope will be the flagship laboratory also on cybersecurity. Uh, cybersecurity is, a, is an industry that is, that is growing dramatically. We have some really unique capabilities at the INL to service uh, cybersecurity, not the least of which is the test beds that we have out there. The INL has a rich history dating from the dawn of commercial nuclear uh, uh, energy. And it was on December 20th, uh, it says here, a cold day on December 20th, 1951. Look, I wasn't there. My kids, my kids think I was. I was not there in 1951. But I can assure you, on December 20th of 1951, it was a cold day in Idaho Falls. Where's Amy Taylor? Amy, are you here? That's true, isn't it, Amy? And you weren't, you weren't there either. Amy is my field office director in Idaho Falls and runs my Idaho Falls office. And uh, again, has been with me since, uh, well, actually been part of the team since I was uh, lieutenant governor. Uh, but in any event, uh, at, at that time, the first demonstrated nuclear fission uh, was done to prove that to generate the power to uh, light our homes and cities. In fact, we still have those light bulbs, as I mentioned. Uh, since then, uh, and, uh, uh, researchers have designed and constructed and tested 52 pioneering nuclear reactors at INL. 
This uh, tremendous work continues to this day. INL is a leading partner with the Gateway for Accelerated Innovation, which I think most of you know already, a nuclear initiative, as well as the Advanced Nuclear Fuels Program and the Nuclear Reactor Systems Program. The valuable work done at the INL lays the groundwork for extending the life of nucle the nuclear fleet, uh, fortifying the grid and wireless networks and developing advanced battery storage capabilities among many, many, many other missions, some of which we can talk about here and some of which we can't talk about here. But in any event, it has a key role, it is a key role in many of the things that uh, the energy uh, industry does and that the United States government does in its uh, uh, efforts to keep America safe. America, and indeed the world, must remain committed to nuclear energy, and nuclear energy must be one of the central pillars of any energy policy. Nuclear energy accounts for 20% of, an, of America's electricity. If you think of that, one-fifth of our homes, hospitals, schools, factories, and grocery stores run every day on nuclear energy. And yet, with the exception of the Vogel expansion currently taking place in Georgia, the United States hasn't built a new nuclear reactor in three decades. In recent years, eight reactors have shut down and 12 more have announced plans to go dark. This is a trend that we really, really cannot afford to continue. America can't afford that. The world really can't afford that. Furthermore, we need to deal with our nation's nuclear waste, which continues to accumulate at reactor sites across the nation. A few weeks ago, I attended an energy committee hearing on nuclear waste. We were having the exact same dis conversations about how to deal with our nuclear waste that we were having when I joined the committee 11 years ago. Don't you love the United States Congress? <laughs> we need to open Yucca Mountain. Yeah. <laughs> Yucca Mountain is safe, it's sensible, and it's the will of the people through our elected Congress. It is the law of the land. And when resistance occurs, we need to keep pushing because a national repository at Yucca Mountain is law enacted by the United States Congress. As we look across the world, more, and, uh, more nuclear reactors are being constructed overseas as compared to the United States. Russia is working diligently to build new units and grow its export capabilities. China has more than a dozen rea uh, reactors currently under construction. And India is looking to produce 25% of its electricity from nuclear energy by 2050. And those of you who've been to India know why they need nuclear energy if you've ever tried to take a breath there. Russia, China, and others are moving forward, undoubtedly happy that we seemingly can't get out of our own way. Every premature closure and construction project abandoned is a victory for our competitors. The U.S. is at a tipping point where our nuclear energy industry will either flourish through new technology or continue to slowly decline. Uh, I, had, I had the occasion to have uh, dinner with Bill Gates, what was that, two, three weeks ago or something like that? And uh, as most of you know, Bill is a real visionary. I mean, he's one of those unique individuals you meet that is a big thinker. A lot like our president today, I might add. He is a big, you might not think so, but, but take my word for it, he is a big thinker. Bill Gates is like that, he is a big thinker. And we had a robust discussion about the, the statistics uh, that, that I just rolled out here. Look, there's, there, we've all lived to see things change. We've all seen what they call disruptive industries that come in and take out another industry. Vicky and I still try to run our VHR, and our kids can't understand what the, what the problem is with it. But there are those disruptive industries. But you know what? There is no industry that's going to disrupt the nuclear industry. That is never, ever going to happen. Indeed, centuries from now, people are going to look back at the 20th century and the 21st century, and they're going to say, how, how come these people didn't get it sooner? Why, why didn't they understand that this is the way to generate electricity. Carbon will be gone. There, there won't be carbon around, uh, and so it's not gonna be that. And I'm not sure, but I don't think you can run uh, submarines with windmills. You might be able to, I don't know. <laughs> the only way that you can generate load electricity is with nuclear power. 
and it is going to be the power of the future, and those people that are naysayers are going to be proven wrong at the end of the day. There's no other way to look at this. Nuclear energy is the future. We need to... Com We really need to continue to support the safe and efficient use of the existing reactor fleet, but we also need to build more reactors. Advanced nuclear reactors... <laughs> Some of you have an interest in that. I'm glad to hear that. Advanced nuclear reactors hold great promise and potential. I'm excited about the potential of the small modular reactor. In the Mountain West, we have New Scale Power, which last year became the first SMR company to complete the Nuclear Regulatory Commission's Phase One review. Some of you here today are involved in that project. Thank you. As New Scale continues to move forward, Idaho and the Idaho National Lab will continue to work with them to make their, ground their groundbreaking design a reality. Other advanced reactor designs are being developed that could significantly benefit our military. The Army has stated that 52% of the military casualties in Iraq and Afghanistan occurred during land transportation uh, missions, including the transportation of fuel. During the, during the drive to Baghdad in 2003, uh, General Mattis, we all know him as Mad Dog Mattis, stated, unleash us from the tether of fuel. I've been an early supporter of micro-nuclear reactors, and I am hopeful that the collaboration currently taking place between the Department of Energy and the Department of Defense, along with the work that BWX uh, Technologies is conducting, will ultimately be used by our military to save American lives. As you listen to the news, you may have, uh, you may be tempted to believe that everything is broken in Washington, D.C. Indeed, sometimes I think everything is broken in Washington, D.C. However, when it comes to nuclear energy and advanced nuclear, there is good news. Last Congress, both the Nuclear Energy Innovation Capabilities Act and the Nuclear Energy Innovation and Modernization Act were signed into law. Important to the nuclear industry, NECA uh, created a National Reactor Innovation Center which will bring together the technical expertise of our national labs and the Department of Energy to promote construction of experimental reactors. As we discuss advanced nuclear technology, there's also an increasing awareness about the need for a versatile reactor-based fast neutron source. A fast neutron uh, test reactor is necessary to support testing of advanced fuels, materials, uh, instrumentation, and sensors, and you know the U.S. does not currently possess that capability. The Idaho National Lab has been an integral partner with universities, industrial partners, and other national labs who are developing the preconceptional design. I'm hopeful that the versatile test reactor will find a home in Idaho. It belongs in Idaho. Just yesterday, the Senate Energy and Natural Resource Committee marked up uh, Senate Bill 903, the Nuclear Energy Leadership Act, which I collaborated with Chairman Murkowski and Senator Booker on. This bipartisan legislation seeks to boost nuclear energy innovation and ensure advanced reactors can provide safe, affordable, and reliable power to meet our national and global energy needs. We on the Senate Energy and Natural Resources Committee are committed to seeing this important legislation crosses the finish line. From the first light bulb lit on December 20th, 1951 in Southeast Idaho, the United States has been a global leader in nuclear energy. I want to see that leadership continue. The US, US must have a healthy industry com comparable, capable of deploying the most advanced reactor concepts in the world at a competitive price. To bolster the nuclear industry, it is important that everyone, from the Department of Energy to our national labs and our industry partners, foster new and creative partnerships. Thank you again for honoring me with this award. There's a lot of people that have gotten me here. God bless you all and thank you for coming to me.
one with my name on it. <laughs> we, we were, uh, we're really uh, delighted to have, I mean, we're really lucky to have a credible champion like that uh, as at the helm of this Senate Committee on Foreign Relations and just two heartbeats away from the chairmanship of the uh, Senate <laughs> Energy and Power Committee. And I will say, let's hear a chant of six more years. Six more years. So he's in cycle. Um, but that, that you, you didn't miss a beat there uh, on, on any issue, as, as Clarence would say, spot on. Yeah, but uh, some people got that joke. But <laughs> Chris Colbert. You know, we, uh, we are going to have dessert. Juan, you, you can, uh, by the way, I want to thank our wonderful wait staff tonight for. We, w we, were, we would be remiss. Uh, what we're going to have for dessert, we're going to have Llewellyn King uh, to offer salad story. For years, uh, well, before I get into Llewellyn, I want to say that in addition to some of the luminaries that we identified earlier, they were Senate confirmed, we also have representatives here from the United States Department of Energy. We have, uh, we have uh, Captain Jim Calgary, skipper of the, uh, I'm only doing this, of the SS.